There are some people who are curious about the making process of this video. So I am going to briefly show you. First, I write a script in Korean like this. Once the Korean part is done, I copy and change it to English using Google Translate. I think the translation job can be done by myself, but I usually use Google Translate first because the contents are too much and I need to save time. Of course, Google Translation is not perfect, so I translate the translated English sentences back to Korean from Google Translate. In this state, I further refine English sentences so that the whole English expressions are what I intended and the Korean sentences on the right make sense. When the translation is finished, I paste the Korean and English scripts into the list box of the tool I made. Then, I bring sentences one by one and use an AI service to convert texts into Korean and English voices. For English, I use IBM Watson's TTS service. Because it supports API, I modified a Python code demonstrated in a YouTube video, and my tool can generate English voice directly. For Korean, I use the Clover AI TTS service provided by Naver. But using API is not easy, so I use a macro to generate Korean voice from the Naver homepage. In this way, MP3 files are created in Korean and English for each sentence. If the lengths of Korean and English voices are too different, the video could be awkward. So, I try to make them similar in length. 그리고 반드시 한국어 문장을 들어보고 and English as well. So, two long audio files are created. Since the audio is synthesized using TTS, the original text files are converted to subtitle files directly. And in a video editing tool, those audio files and screen capture video files are synchronized. When there is a mismatch between screen video and voice, it is possible to rearrange the timeline of the audio files, but manipulating video speed is relatively easier. Once the video is complete, I open the subtitle files again and check each sentence. If the sentence is too long, I divide the subtitle text into appropriate lengths. Fortunately, it can be done with a few mouse clicks using my tool. The video is then finalized by overlaying the subtitles on the screen using a video encoding tool. By the way, in this video, we will open the garage door on the smartphone by manipulating remote control button. And send an actionable notification to the user's smartphone if the garage door opens while nobody is at home. Hello everyone, this is the Makeshift channel who has only one video remaining to the completion of the garage door project. Please like and subscribe. I will do my best till the end of this project. First, we need to operate the garage door remote control with the output pins of Node MCU, and we already configured many parts of it using switch in the first video of the garage door automation. So, we will check if the voltage of the output pin really changes when we manipulate the switch from the overview screen. To do this, we will connect the LED between the remote control output pin which is D5 and the ground pin of the Node MCU. However, to protect the LED from the overcurrent, which I don't know how much, I will also connect around 1 kilo ohm resistor in series. It's not so pretty, but the topology of the circuit is identical to the illustration. Now, when I click on the switch, a voltage of 3.3 volts will be applied to the D5 pin, and the LED will light on. Ok, when I click on the switch, the LED is on, and it turns off when I click it again. However, since the buttons on the remote control are simple push buttons, so the switch should not be turned on continuously like this, but it should be turned off shortly after we press it. This part can be implemented in the Home Assistant or in the Node MCU. If you want to make things simple, it should be implemented in Node MCU because no extra command needs to be transmitted from Home Assistant to Node MCU through Wi Fi. Go to ESP Home. Let's edit the garage door control. Under the D5 pin switch area, write on underscore, turn underscore, on. It means something typed below will be executed when the switch is turned on. 
after two spaces, write a dash followed by delay and colon. One space and write 200 milliseconds. On the next line write dash, switch dot turn underscore off, colon. And write the remote underscore output. It means it will wait for 0.2 seconds when the switch is on, then it will turn off the remote output, which is the ID of this switch. So, when you turn on the switch, it will turn off by itself 0.2 seconds later. Press save and install. If you select wirelessly, the firmware update will proceed automatically via OTA. Once the upload is complete, we'll hit stop and go back to the overview to manipulate the switch. Yes, now when I press the switch, it waits 0.2 seconds, and then the switch turns off by itself. Here are things to keep in mind when opening and closing your garage door. Remotely opening and closing your garage door from outside your home can be both convenient and dangerous. First, if you open the garage door without looking at it, someone outside can break in while the door is open, and it can be a security problem. What's more dangerous is that, if you close the garage door while you are not looking at it, a human or animal can get caught in the garage door coming down, causing serious injury or loss of life. This can be a safety problem. Although garage door manufacturers have designed safety logic such as sensors to prevent this risk, it is still very dangerous to lower the garage door without looking at it. When you set up and use this remote garage door opening and closing function, please be aware that this function has such risks. This video is not responsible for any undesirable outcomes that happen in the course of using this function. However, I will make the Home Assistant display a confirmation window to prevent unwanted opening or closing of the garage door by accidentally pressing the garage door switch on the smartphone or computer screen. First, click the three dots button on the top right of the overview screen and enter the edit mode. Press the edit button on the garage door control card. Click Show Code Editor at the bottom left of the edit window. Press Enter on the Garage Door Remote Control Output switch. Put proper spaces and write type colon just below the entity. Just ignore the radically changing window size that happens when you key in a text. Type button next. On the next line, type action underscore name colon. Then type click. On the next line, type tap underscore action and colon. Two more spaces below it, an action colon toggle. Confirmation colon on the next line. Then two more spaces, and text colon. Then, write some appropriate warning text as a confirmation message. Now it's done. Press save. Exit the edit screen. OK, now the shape of the remote control switch has been changed, let's test it. When you click the switch, a confirmation window pops up. If you further click the OK, LED blinks. Now, let's take out the LED from the output pin and connect a relay to eventually manipulate the button on the remote control. More specifically, it is a relay module, and my relay module looks like this. There are minus, plus, and S on the left side terminals. The minus is to be connected to the ground of node MCU, and the plus is to the VU pin. S in the S terminal would be a signal. So, it should be connected to D5, which is the output signal pin of node MCU. VU is the only 5 volts output pin from node MCU, and the voltage level of all other pins is 3.3 volts. Since the operating voltage range of this relay module is 5 volts to 12 volts, it may be difficult to operate the relay with a 3.3 volts output signal, but there has been no big issue for me doing two projects so far. When the input of the relay is connected in this way and a voltage of 5 volts or 3.3 volts is applied at the S terminal, the internal electromagnet of the relay activates and the internal switch is closed. To be precise, as shown in the picture, Terminal 1 and Terminal 2 are contacted at a normal state, and 2 and 3 are detached. When a signal voltage is applied to the S terminal, Terminal 1 and 2 become detached, and 2 and 3 are contacted. So we will use Terminal 2 and 3, 
which contact when signal voltage is applied, as the output of the relay. Then, to check the operation of the relay, we will connect the LED to the output terminal of the relay again. This time, we will use a battery because the power of the LED must be supplied separately. In other words, let's make a series connection of the battery, LED, resistor and relay, and turn on and off this LED from the home assistant. OK, this is the outcome of the relay activation circuit. I followed the circuit diagram, but doesn't look so pretty. I couldn't find the insulation tape nearby, so I used duct tape instead. Now, let's operate the remote control switch on the home assistant screen. Yes, the LED turned on momentarily as before. But this time you could hear the activation sound of the relay. Now, let's think about how to open and close the garage door with a relay that is connected to the output pin of the Node MCU. The first thing I can consider is to connect the relay to the garage door switch mounted on the wall. It is supposed to open or close when the button is pressed like this, but you should think of a way to connect wires through the backside of this switch. Another method is to connect the relay to the button switch of the remote control, which is usually tucked on the sun visor. There are three buttons here, and as I explained last time, only one button opens and closes one garage door. With this remote control, you can open and close up to three garage doors. A really big and nice house would need three buttons, but in the place I am living, only one button is necessary. Press this once make the garage door go down. Press again to stop. And press again to go up. Then, press again to go down again. I will choose the second method. So, the garage door control system I'm going to make is to bring one extra remote control, connect it to the Node MCU, which is already connected to the garage door sensors, and make the system operate remote control inside the garage. One downside is you need to replace the battery of the remote control every few years. But it is an easy way if you have a spare remote control. OK, let's disassemble this remote control. Take out the PCB and turn it over to find the soldering positions for the three switches. From what I've tested with the multimeter, the horizontal terminals are always connected. And the vertical terminals are normally open, but when the switch is pressed, it becomes closed. So, connect two wires to terminal 2 and terminal 3 of the relay. And connect one of these two wires to the upper side of the push button terminal, and the other wire to the lower side. Then, the relay operation will become identical to the actual pushing of the remote button. In order to connect, of course, you have to do some soldering, but I don't have an iron right now, and the owner of this remote control is the list provider. So I will use duct tape again. But you should definitely do soldering and reassemble the case of the remote control before you install the system in your garage. Now, in this state, press the remote control switch on your home assistant screen. If you select OK, the LED on the button of the remote control blinks. It seems like works properly. Then I'll go to the garage and set up the test bench. The test bench was improvised because I have to finish this test before the list provide use her car. From the Home Assistant app on the smartphone, I will operate the garage door. Tap the button once and tap OK. Finally, the garage door opens. Tap again. You can also stop or close your garage door. Yes, the experiment was successful at one shot, and now I need to quickly restore the remote control to its original state before the list provider knows. So far, we have controlled the garage door using the output pin of Node MCU, and from now on, we will send the garage door alarm to the smartphone using the actionable notification. In fact, most of the actionable notifications have already been covered in the third video of the previous door alarm. In this video, 
I will skip the detailed explanation and simply point out how to make it. First of all, we will assume that there are two smartphone users in our home. Both users must have the Home Assistant app installed on their smartphones. The registration of the additional user in the Home Assistant was covered in the second video of geofencing. The two registered users of my Home Assistant are Makeshift and List Provider, who provides shopping list to me. And zones need to be set up as well. Go to Configuration and select Zones. A map will appear, and the location of your house will probably be set to home by default. And if you do not have another zone named near home, click the Add Zone button and set a larger zone area that includes your original home zone and name it the near home. Next, click File Editor and open configuration.yaml file to set up a binary sensor called Home Occupied. From this template definition, all you need to change are two usernames of your own. You can copy this content by selecting, see more of this video. However, since it is not possible to put the inequality sign in the see more text, you must change a dollar sign in the text to an inequality sign. And here is the input boolean defined when creating the door alarm video. The garage door needs another alarm, so copy and paste this part as it is. The entity to be changed to notify alarm to phones too. Also, change the name to hit me to notify too. The rest of the settings such as the off initial state and the icon are not to be changed. Now hit save and restart the home assistant. From the overview screen, enter edit mode. If you don't have a person card, add it. If you already have, please click edit and add a new user and a new binary sensor, which are list provider and home occupied respectively. When you're done to this far, your person card has the locational information of two users and also a sensor named home occupied that indicates whether one of the users is at home or not, that means the house is empty or not. Now, we will make our home assistant send an alarm message to the user's smartphone if the garage door is opened while the home occupied sensor is away, which means nobody is at home. And if you go up to the top of the editing screen, some of you may have a tab called TTS and some others don't have. I will assume that you don't have one and just make it by pressing a plus button. The title is TTS2. The URL will be TTS underscore input 2 in lowercase. Press save and select add card from the newly created tab. Then select Media Control among other cards. Next, set the entity to be your home group so that all Google speakers will speak out. Press Save to exit the edit mode. I now have a total of three tabs on my screen. Actually, there is no difference between TTS and TTS2, but I just made it again to show you how to make it. Now, things are ready to begin to make the actionable notifications. First, go to Configuration. Choose Automations. Click Add Automation. Select Start with an empty automation from the below. The name of the automation is Garage Door Alarm Notification. Set Parallel for the mode. Then click on Trigger Type and select State. If you enter hit in the entity item, two hit me to notify pop up. The first one is being used for the door alarm, so I will select the second hit me to notify two for the garage door alarm. And type on in the two area. This automation is only executed when the state changes to on. Go further down and under actions, select action type as call service. And if you type notify in service, notify enabled smartphones appear. If you select the option send a notification with notify, a notification will be sent to all registered smartphones. Next, select message and write garage door alarm. Type alarm in the title. Also, select data and write TTL is zero. And set priority high. Then type actions followed by a colon and press enter. 
put two spaces followed by a dash, action colon, space, and uppercase URI. Four spaces on the next line followed by a title colon open TTS. Four spaces again on the next line, followed by a lowercase URI colon. And enter the slash lovelace slash TTS underscore input 2, which is the location of the TTS2 tab on the overview screen. Two spaces on the next line, and define one more action. The name of the action is capitalized message underscore leave, and write leave quietly in the title. Define one more last action on the next line. The name of the action is dismiss, and the title is dismiss. Only the first D is capital. Then click add action at the bottom of the screen to add an action. Action is call service. Select turn underscore off in the service and select the service that turns off the input boolean. I need to select a target to turn off. Click pick entity and select hit me to notify to which I made a moment ago. In this way, when hit me to notify to turns on, two actions are executed. One is to send an actionable notification to the user's smartphone and receive a response, and the other is to immediately change the value of hit me to notify to to off it is to prepare for the next trigger. When we look at the definition of the first action, we will notice that, by the actionable notification, the user can choose one out of three actions. The first action has already been specified here to open the TTS2 tab. The third dismiss is literally the end of the alarm situation. So, it will do nothing. However, since the second action message leave was declared here, but nothing has been defined yet, we must define it now. First, save the action you just created. And let's go back and add one more automation. Select start with an MP automation. The name of the automation is process message leave. Mode is parallel. Trigger type is event and the event type is mobile underscore app underscore notification underscore action in all lowercase. In event data, type action colon message underscore leave. This is the name of the action that was mentioned but not defined in the previous automation. And the action to be handled by this automation is call service. The service is a speaking service that comes out when you enter TTS. The entity is home group. The content of the spoken message is a parody of the lines in the Robocop movie. Come quietly or there will be trouble. Let's save and test the automation for a while. Hit run actions. A moment later, a notification will be received from your smartphone. If I choose dismiss, nothing happens. Hit run actions again. If you choose the second. Leave quietly or there will be trouble. The message the Robocop might say comes out from the Google speakers. In node red, go to the garage door control tab. Actionable notifications will be sent when the garage door is opening and the time is past midnight or when no one is at home. Bring the time range node to the proper place. The time range is from midnight to 5 a.m. And connect this with the change node of the garage door opening, just like the sundown node. Then, take the call service node and connect it with the first output of the time range node. If it is late at night, when the garage door is opened, the output will come out from the first terminal and the call service node will be executed. The name of this call service is notified to phone 2. 
The domain is input underscore boolean. The service to be called is turn on. An entity ID, type input underscore boolean, and select notify alarm to phone to. This changes the value of the input boolean from off to on, then an actionable notification will be sent to the smartphone according to the previously defined automation rule. Now bring the current state node and connect it to the second output of the time range node. And the name of this node is home empty question mark. Entity ID is binary sensor home occupied. And change the condition of if state from string to boolean. Change the case to false. And change the state type from string to boolean. Click done. In this way, when the value of home occupied is false, which means the house is empty, the current state node will send an output to the first terminal. Finally, connect the first output terminal of this current state node to the call service node that changes the value of the input boolean. According to node red logic added today, when the garage door is opened, it first checks the time. If it is in the middle of the night, it sends a notification to the smartphone. If it is not late night, but no one is at home, a notification is sent to the user's smartphone as well. Now click deploy. I will change the setting of the home location for a while so that the home assistant recognizes that our home is empty. And when you open the garage door. Garage door is opening. An actionable notification pops up on the smartphone. I will select the TTS that was not previously selected. I'll type a text and hit send. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.